back this week with Coach Q. Spartan Jermaine undefeated, district champs. Coach, talk about these last two games here, the St. Whitmer and St. John's games. Those are a little closer than usual, not as many points as the Spartans have been scoring. Take us through those games a little bit. Well, I mean, two teams that's very comfortable with us, uh, obviously. Uh, both teams are in our conference. So, you know, we're very familiar with each other. Um, and, and to go back to the Whitmer game, you know, we struggled in their gym uh, late in February to, uh, to get a win. And even though we got the win on their floor, you could sense, you could detect the confidence in those kids. You know, a couple kids were telling me after the game, you know, with smiles on their faces that, hey, we'll see you guys again. Um, you know, so they were confident. And, and you could tell that from the way that they played. They played hard. Uh, they had a great game plan. Um, I thought they executed the game plan extremely well. Uh, I, thought, I thought the emphasis was to, for sure, uh, get the ball out of Xavier's hands uh, at all possible. Um, and they did that. They made shots. Uh, they got the plays. They needed to keep themselves in the game. Uh, you know, I thought our defensive, our defensive effort was the difference in that game. I thought some guys stepped up in some key moments, uh, starting with uh, DeMonte Lyles. Uh, he had a great, a great game defensively. Uh, but collectively, you know, we all did a great job. Uh, we kind of understood with the comfort zone that uh, the game wouldn't be in the 70s or the 80s. Uh, it would be more of a, a possession game, more of a defensive game. Uh, but, you know, we were blessed to be able to get a win uh, in that environment. Moving forward on to uh, St. John's, uh, you know, we've played those guys six times in the last 12 months. So you talk about, you know, knowing each other, you know, front to back and back to front. They're very familiar with us. Uh, you know, just a team that <clears throat> we didn't feel comfortable using a lot of pressure uh, against those guys because they are very well coached and they're very smart basketball players. Uh, so we wanted to make it a half court game. You know, we would prefer for it to be up and down, but we also have to understand, you know, the intelligence level and the IQ level of those kids. So uh, we only gave up 33 points, and I know it's not. You know, it's not it's not a great showing in the eyes of people who want to see a lot of points being scored. But, you know, to only give up 33 points in a tournament game against a great team in St. John speaks volumes. Uh, you know, we had to contain Vince Williams. Uh, we had to contain Kennard. And I thought we did a fabulous job of that. Uh, we didn't score the ball well. Uh, our guys hadn't shot the ball well in that gym. So, you know, I'm looking forward to us, you know, having a lot better performance tomorrow uh, against Lorraine. Uh, but, you know, we're excited to be in a situation, you know, I thought these were two of the toughest tournament games that we could ask for at this point, just because of the familiar, you know, the familiarness with uh, Whitmer and St. John's, knowing us, playing us in our conference. Uh, so now we get to go up against a team that, you know, they don't necessarily know us from a physical standpoint. I'm sure they, they've done homework scouting us and watching film on us, but it's a little bit different when you actually have to play on the floor against us. And so. You know, they play a similar style like we do. You know, we're kind of looking forward to it, and you know, hopefully we can get it done. It seems like your guys never say, "Geez, we might not win this one." Where does that come from? They you, stick with it. You know, that comes from me being around the core group of these guys from they were kids. Uh, you know, Lima, we always used Lima as a, as a place that you know we didn't get a lot of respect growing up. So as these kids got older, they wanted to earn their respect, and the only way they would do that is they won. You know, so. These kids have been around me, you know, for quite some time, uh, going back to our, our team Lima days, and, and they've done a, a, a sensational job of wanting to fight and wanting to show people, you know, we are come, we do come from a small town, a small community, uh, but we have a lot of fight in us, and you know, they just don't quit. You know, uh, I've seen opportunities where they had where they could have just laid down and, and moved on to the next game. Um, but they don't quit. They have a lot of fight in them, and, and we believe in playing the entire game. Do you know much about the ring going in? A little different than the last two games. You know those teams so well. Yes. Again, I mean, again, I know I know as much as I can see from the film and talking to several different coaches that, that have played against those guys. Um, but when the ball goes up, you know, guys got to make plays, guys got to get stops, and guys have to rebound. So, you know, I expect a more up and down style game. They're just like us. I, I think they're more athletic than we are overall. Uh, but, you know, my guys love to fight. You know, they, they sit down and guard. So, you know, it's going to be a pretty good game. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. What do you think the road looks ahead for you guys? I know the number one team, Huber Heights, is out now. I mean, what do you predict here going through? Well, you know, I, I don't look ahead at all. Um, and that's I think that's why we're in a situation. I make sure my kids 
don't worry about the next game uh, because we on we on a one game streak and we taking one game at a time. Uh, you know, every everybody that's left in this tournament has an opportunity to chop down some nets. So we just want to take one game at a time. You know, one one quarter at a time, one possession at a time. And if we do those things and continue to to rebound and defend, I think we'll be fine. You know, we don't we don't have a, a choice if the ball goes in the basket. Um, that's out of our hands. That's that's got something to do with the basketball gods. But at the end of the day, we do control if we can rebound, and we do control if we can sit down and guard from a defensive standpoint. And, and I think if we do those two things like we've been doing, you know, hopefully we'll be fine. Talk a little bit to me about the support you guys have received. And you've been sort of. A a tough end here, last two games, in Toledo playing, Toledo teams, easy for their fans to get there. You've got a lot of people out of these games. Yeah, definitely. I thought, you know, I still think throughout the whole tournament, I think we had the hardest road. Uh, we had our sectionals playing in Toledo, <laughs> so we had to go to Toledo for our districts, you know. Um, but the Lima base has been, you know, has been tremendous in supporting us. Um, you know, I think three schools here with us, you know, Perry and LCC, you know, the, the energy level for the whole city is at an all-time high. You know, I'm, I'm going tonight to uh, support Perry. I, I know a few of those guys. I know the coach, and I, I want those guys to do well. Um, but the support has been great, you know. Uh, we want the entire city to come out. You know, I would like the entire city to come out and support all three teams. I think that's what it's all about. Um, you know, it definitely gives us a boost to look around and see, you know, everybody from Lima supporting us. It definitely helps. And, and sometimes that extra that extra clap or that extra yell is the difference in, in our effort. We've been hearing about and seeing all season long this, this family thing. Talk to me about where that came from and how big a part of family is to, to this team this year. You know, I don't necessarily know where it came from. You know, again, I think it goes back to, you know, me being a part of these kids' lives, you know, for many years. You know, I've always looked at these guys like my sons, you know, uh, a lot of these guys don't have fathers in their lives. So I've been the guy, you know, along with my brother, along with uh, my uncle, uh, Radar, uh, Chris Jackson, you know, we've been the guys <clears throat> that's been like father figures to these guys. You know, the, the, the great part about it, you know, their families trust us. Uh, their families trust me. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely hard. Uh, I, you know, I do some things to these kids that, you know, I'm sure most coaches wouldn't think of. I say some things to these kids that I'm sure most coaches wouldn't think of. But at the end of the day, when you start dealing with trust, I think that's probably the highest, you know, the highest degree of understanding. I and mean, these kids trust me, they know, you know, we may bicker and we may have some disagreements, but they know at the end of the road, I'm definitely going to be here supporting them. Uh, we are a family, you know, and that's exactly how we approach each other. A family argues, family fights, but at the end of the day, you know, a family is a bond that nobody can break it, and that's the bond that we have.